Hello! Part 7 of our mini-series on the Mediterranean sub-races. So, for a lot of you, uh, I think this is the uh, video you've been waiting for. This is going to be a slightly uh, longer video. I'm covering two plates here, uh, so there will be eight specimens. It's uh, first Atlanto Mediterraneans from southwestern Europe, and then it's blue eyed Atlanto Mediterraneans. Right, so uh, this Atlanto Mediterranean stock uh, arrived towards the end of the Neolithic uh, in association with the uh, megalith builders and the seafarers. Uh, uh, it's, it's worth noting though that the megalithic culture started at the same time as the Neolithic, so the megalithic culture started a lot earlier. But it's associated, and uh, some something he talks about specifically uh, in regard to a couple of these specimens is the long barrow uh, cultures, which was an, uh, an interesting, interesting burial method that their culture uh, used, which we'll get to at some point. But uh, two of these are recapitulations. So the first and the last example are recapitulations metrically of that particular. Uh, Neolithic type. So first up we've got uh, the, the Long Barrow example. So this is a fellow from Azer in Portugal uh, and he's uh, yeah he's an Atlanta Mediterranean but he's a recapitulation of this Long Barrow type. So a very good uh, example of the stock. Next we move on to this North Italian fellow from uh, Villa Romagno in Piedmont uh, near Genoa. Again, he's a good example of an Atlanto Mediterranean. You can see he's a more, more robust, large skulled uh, Mediterranean uh, type. Uh, moving on, we've got a Frenchman. And this Frenchman is dolichocephalic. He's not brachycephalized uh, at all. Uh, the, the thing with the French and the Basque we'll come on to is they're largely brachycephalic, but these specimens uh, are not brachycephalized. And he says, uh, this Atlanta Mediterranean in combination with Alpine, so brachycephalized, is a large part of the southern French uh, population. So here we move on to the Dolichocephalic uh, Basque fellow, and this is actually a good transition onto the next page because this uh, this fellow is actually uh, is a tall fellow of great head length, Dolichocephalic, and blue eyed. So uh, and he also notes that like like many of the Basques, they have a they have sort of dinaromorphism. Yeah, he's extremely lettering and uh, very narrow-jawed as well. Right, so we move on to the blue-eyed Atlanta Mediterraneans. So the first one is the least typical of these four examples, uh, and that's on account of his obviously Cro-Magnon-influenced jaw. He's got a very wide jaw for an Atlanta Mediterranean. But otherwise, his skull form is typical of the type. These four examples, these four blue-eyed Atlanta Mediterraneans, all have head lengths well over 200 millimeters. So those are long skulls and large skulls. Uh, overall, and he talks again about the combination of uh, black or brown hair with uh, blue eyes that uh, seems to come along with this tall, uh, large, and long skull type. And it's associated with the seafarers I was mentioning, uh, who built the built the megaliths everywhere where they landed. Okay, so moving on, you have a Spaniard from Vigo uh, in northwestern Spain, and again, he's a good example of the Atlantic. Type. The Atlanto Mediterranean type is probably the largest element in Iberians. So moving on, we've got a, uh, a black-haired Irishman from County Donegal. And it says that he's a good example of the Neolithic type of Ireland. He's tall and large-headed, but they say this fellow is aberrant in head breadth. So he's got, uh, I think, a slightly wider skull than is typical. Uh, and then we move on to another long barrow uh, recapitulation, and this fellow is a Scotsman from Ayrshire. And it says he's an excellent example of that type, uh, a direct survival of the Neolithic period. 